He turned to me and he says, John? And I said, yes, Archbishop, John. He said, yes, Archbishop. He says, stay in the struggle. Stay in the struggle. I said, okay. He says, it's when you're in the struggle that you'll, be the, you'll find Jesus and you'll be the closest to him. This gospel reveals how profoundly human and totally divine Jesus is. It's a gospel of Jesus' human love, strong emotions and human love, but also the divine love of Jesus who gives us the I am, the I am statement. Not just who Jesus is, but also what he means for us in our lives. He has that a divine authority, Lazarus, come out, and he does, it happens. The Gospel of John, the story of Lazarus, a person I believe who was sickly, in the language of today, we would probably say who was disabled. Now, he is disabled, I come to this because Martha and Mary, who are unmarried, yet they are head of their household where Lazarus is staying, something that is not common in the time of Jesus. Now Lazarus seems to be a nobody yet, except for Martha and Mary and Jesus. He seems also to be at the center of their lives, the family lives. John Vanier, the founder of large communities and faith and light programs, what we have here at St. Michael's for the special needs those handicapped, in his writings of the Gospel of John, he's come to the conclusion that Lazarus has a handicap and probably a very serious one. Now, there is something very special in being with the handicap, the special needs people. They just seem to have that simple trust of God. They have a way of joining, joining situations of life with the divine life of God in Jesus. A few years ago, I was asked to help out in a regional faith and light retreat that was held up in the, up in the north by Mount Vernon. Now there was over 50 special needs people from about 10 different faith and light groups across the Northwest. I also kind of though double booked myself that same weekend, there was the Steubenville Life Teen Week Conference in Spokane, which has about 1,500 teens. I was able to work out that I was able to join the retreat on Friday and Saturday and would come back and leave on Saturday night and go back to Steubenville Teens in Spokane. What was special is, is upon that leaving that Saturday night, the Faith and Light Group, those special needs, those handicapped people, beautiful people, wanted to know so much about the teens, what I was going to, what were they doing. I told them that right now, at this very t moment, they were in adoration, a special presence of Jesus. But it surprised the heck out of me. Spontaneously, they came out and said, we must pray for these things, those teens right now, right now. So we did in a circle on the deck with the wheelchairs, the walkers, lots of different body languages, lots of handicapped body languages, motions, and expressed faces. They prayed, they prayed up a storm for those, God's grace to be with those teens. It was a powerful moment for me. Being there with this group, experienced the emotions, their body, their total belief, so simple, but so trusting in God, total trust that God graces will be with those teens. They were encountering their presence, situation with God for the teens. When we encounter situations of desire, need, distress, or tragedy, we oftentimes find ourselves focusing on what's wrong, what's broken, and what needs help. 
By doing so, we are also beginning to express God to do something. However, Jesus wants us to approach situations and ask the question, how can I be an instrument who manifests the glory of God in this moment, in this moment, in this situation, in this struggle that I'm dealing with? The ultimate prayer of a disciple in the midst of many situations is to be joined to the divine life of God in Jesus. In this gospel, Jesus is so profoundly a human, vulnerable and loving. Here he weeps in front of death, his best friend, a good friend. He touches the, the horrors of death too. The, the void created in the heart when someone is left you loved. He is moved by Martha and Mary and their pain in seeing his family, his friends. These are real pains we experience when we love, when we have a loss, when we have suffered, and when we have struggled. Jesus knows our struggles well, and during these times can we join our situations of life where we are with the I am, the divine life of God in Jesus. I will never forget a number of years ago I was at the Life Teen Mass on Easter. I was the sacristan for that Mass. And in comes a lady in a hospice wheelchair, motorized. She has tubes. She is tilted back. She can't talk. She has something coming out of her mouth. It was very much a major effort for her to come to this Easter Mass. Her caregiver brings me over and tells me that she cannot receive the host. No solids, no body of Jesus. But could I come with the cup and so she could receive the precious blood? I told him that we normally only have the cup stations and can't bring it back. The lady's face expression of a disappointment. She couldn't talk but her face, her body language it said it all. It came to me during Mass, though, that there is usually a little bit left over in the cup after communion of the precious blood. So I run back and I tell her that if she could wait till after the Mass, I could come back and maybe be able to bring her that precious blood. She lit up with a big smile on her face. And sure enough, after Mass, there was some drops of that precious blood of Jesus in the cups. But now I take it back to her and I got this very, very little tiny amount in this big cup. Her head is tilted back. How was I going to get this into her mouth? How was I going to do this? It just wasn't going to work. I prayed, I thought, moments went by and the spirit led me to take my thumb dip it into the precious blood of the cup, and I put it into her mouth. It was beautiful. I felt her tongue go around and around my thumb. Jesus knows our struggles well. She was joining her situation of life with the divine life of God in Jesus. In this time of Lent, this time of dryness, and often a time of quiet, we just ask ourselves if we are embracing the struggles within ourselves and those struggles of others, and if we are looking for God's hand in these events. Quoting Bishop Barron, he says, Jesus, the I am in our lives, does speak with authority, authority of God. So therefore, his words effect what they say. Jesus says, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man comes out of the tomb. Jesus rebukes the wind, says to the sea, be still, and there is calmness. And the night before he dies, he takes bread and says, 
this is my body. And you know what he says is, this is the Eucharist. We are joined very specially, our human lives, with the divine life of God in Jesus.